Alright, today's video is going to be a weird one, but it's a really interesting conversation, I think. So, the bread and butter of today's little piece is about Eric Stahl, and in particular, just how unfortunate it was being Eric Stahl the past few months, starting all the way back with the trade from the Minnesota Wild to the Buffalo Sabres. Now, we know that Eric Stahl is now a Montreal Canadian. He is not going to join the team for a while. He has to quarantine for a week, which we'll get into a little bit later. But we all kind of know the story here, right? Eric Stahl was a very productive, very highly offensively capable forward with the Minnesota Wild, it's actually kind of funny how they got rid of Stahl, replaced him with a guy who is inferior in Marcus Johansson, and they're doing the best that they have in a long time. A lot of that has to do with Dollar Bill Kirill, Kaprizov going out there, doing his thing, and being one of the hottest rookies to enter the NHL since Artemi Panarin. But regardless, we have ourselves a situation where the Minnesota Wild, after years and years of mediocrity, traded away Eric Stahl, a guy who pretty much knew he was going to be in Minnesota long term for the rest of his life and the rest of his family's life because they were all settled in there, they had property there, they had kids growing up there, it was all good, right? Which is why Eric Stahl, when he was traded to the Buffalo Sabres, was in a really weird spot. We made a video back when this information came out that Eric Stahl really didn't want to leave Minnesota. The only reason he even got traded to Buffalo is because Buffalo was one of the few teams that he did not have on his no-move protection list. And the reason he didn't have Buffalo on that list is because he didn't believe that Buffalo would actually want him. Eric Stahl, back when he set up his no-move, no-trade protection list, put a whole bunch of teams there that he thought were going to be contenders. This is why we had ourselves five rejected Eric Stahl trades back in the day. And I mean, in the day, it's not really that long ago, but you get what I mean. Eric Stahl was in a spot where he really just didn't want to leave. So when he got traded to a team that wasn't one of these contenders in Buffalo that just unexpectedly was like, hey, we're going to start doing well this year. Let's get Taylor Hall. Let's get Eric Stahl. Let's get Cody Eakin. Let's rely on another year of Eichel and Reinhardt and Olafson and Dali and all these players to do well this year. Eric Stahl was kind of surprised. Which is why, heading over to Buffalo, he put up some of the worst numbers he has put up in a very long time. Let's go over the statistics right here. Last year, and the year before that, with the Minnesota Wild, take a look at the numbers here. Incredible. 20 goals in 80 games, 52 points. 20 goals in 66 games and 47 points, over a point per game in the playoffs. In Buffalo, 3 goals, 7 assists in 32 games played. Yeah, we know everybody's kind of doing poorly in Buffalo, but Eric Stahl definitely wasn't doing his part in trying to get rid of that stereotype. Which is why when he was traded to the Montreal Canadiens, things became a little bit more interesting. Here are some quotes from John Vogel via Arpon Basu on The Athletic, talking about what exactly went wrong with the Buffalo Sabres from the man himself, Eric Stahl. Here's the tweet, Eric Stahl's time in Buffalo didn't go well for him and the Sabres. After getting traded to Montreal, here are his thoughts on the Sabres via Arpon Basu. Well, the good part for me right now is I don't really need to explain what happened. I can kind of put that behind me and focus on what I can do for the Canadians, which is what I'm going to try and do. Obviously, it has been a very difficult season for the Sabres and for me personally there. I think there's a lot of contributing factors. I'm not going to lay them all out as far as what my thoughts are. Obviously, I know Kevin is going to do the best he can to recharge that organization, recharge the program, and he'll do a good job. Okay, is that really going to happen? Um, yeah, let's move on. But there are a ways to go. For me, having this chance to play in Montreal and join this team with a lot of great players and a lot of young talent, it's exciting for me. Obviously, it hasn't been the funnest time for the last number of games and parts of the season, but it totally gets you refreshed and excited about this new chance to start fresh game one when I am back in the lineup. Here's another one. There were so many hurdles with the Buffalo Sabres. There were so many things that just didn't line up the way we had in mind or had envisioned. The reality is we started okay. We had an up and down first two weeks or so. We were kind of finding our game, filling our roles, and then we got hit with the virus. It went through our room like wildfire and it wasn't great. Two weeks of guys battling that and a couple of guys battling it pretty hard. It was difficult. 
Rasmus Ristolainen comes to mind, by the way, when you talk about it like that. We kind of, after that, coming back, never found any footing. Then injuries started to mount, and in that division, when you're playing teams that don't beat themselves, it's difficult. We just didn't have enough in that locker room to be able to counteract that and manage it properly. It got tougher and tougher, obviously, but the reality is that's kind of how it went and it's been tough. But for me, being here now and having this chance here in Montreal, I'm excited to play some meaningful games here down the stretch and hopefully get in the playoffs and win a Stanley Cup. That's why we play and being here gives me that chance, so I'm excited about it. And you know what? I really like that he actually goes out there and lays it on the line. Win. Playoffs. Stanley Cup. We want to do this. Here are his comments back when he was traded to the Sabres all the way back in September, and you can definitely see the difference in tone. The way the trade happened was a bit out of the blue. It was a shock for me and my family, but that's sports. That's how some things go, and we'll figure out and navigate as we go. Hopefully, I can be impactful in Buffalo. That's the plan. Here's another longer quote here. I know the Sabres have a lot of talent. I know Jack Eichel is elite. There's also Skinner, whom I played with in Carolina. There are great players there and who are competitive. For me, I'm just going to try to be myself coming in, and hopefully as a group we can develop the team atmosphere, the desire to win and compete every night. So it's a little bit more subtle there with Buffalo, isn't it? He's just going out there and saying, well, it was a surprise, but I'm here now, so let's just try to do what we can with Jack Eichel and Jeff Skinner, two guys that I know are pretty good. Now, we know that Jeff Skinner isn't really the Jeff Skinner of old, and Jack Eichel hasn't played in a while, but hey, there was still that optimism over there from Eric Stahl starting out in Buffalo. But now, he is gone. As he said it himself, man, I can leave that part behind me. Just the way that his phrase is so funny to me, but it is what it is now that Eric Stahl, after experiencing the worst in his hockey career thus far, in a position where he didn't even feel like it was going to be an option because he was just settled with his family in Minnesota, he didn't realize he was going to be traded, now that he has gone through that absolute dumpster fire of a team that is the Buffalo Sabres though, he is getting a chance to come back out here in a competitive environment, go out there, play for Montreal, play against the Canadian teams, who knows? Against these Canadian goaltenders and defense, Eric Stahl can probably go out there and start scoring a whole bunch more points, can he? Because, I mean, what? I think everybody's kind of been aware that the Canadian division is the most goal-productive division in the entire NHL so far, but, you know, hey, some teams can take advantage of that, right? So, for Eric Stahl... Talk to me in the comments what you think about this player acquisition right here. I myself, as I said previously, I'm a big fan. I love seeing this depth coming out here. And for Mark Bergevin to go out there and just kind of wink, wink, wink his way at reporters when asked if he is going to go out there and make some more trades, you know that he's going to make some more trades. He's going to have to move some money out. So when that happens, we'll see how they can free up their economic situation, how they can get Cole Caulfield in the lineup soon. And, you know, this is a different team that started out the year compared to the team that is going to finish off the year. Whether that's in the playoffs or in the regular season and they don't make the playoffs, who cares? The fact is, it's going to be assembled a little bit differently with some new faces and some more lethal goal scoring injected within it. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Eric Stahl, the situation for him, how terrible it was to get traded when he didn't feel like he was even going to get traded, separated from his family and all that. Now he is experiencing what he is a revival in this short NHL season for him. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Hosnayanayan and bye. <laughs>